Hey, what's going on everybody? Today on the channel, we're going to be talking about macOS Sonoma. So this has been released finally here uh, just a few days ago. So we're going to go over all the new features here in this new version 14 of macOS. So let's go ahead and start off by how big this update actually was. So on my computer, you can see that macOS Sonoma version 14 it came in at about 4.51 gigabytes. So this will obviously vary depending on your computer and uh, whether you're already on the developer betas or anything like that. So mine came in at about four and a half gigabyte. If you choose to download this from the Mac App Store instead of actually uh, going through system settings and just upgrading your software from there, it was actually coming in at about 12 gigabytes i believe it was more like 12 and a half i don't know why you would want to just not download it from your system settings but if you want to you can go to the mac app store and you can do it from there also we can take a look right here at the list of compatible macs that are able to run this new software so as you can see if you watch my channel you know that i have a 2018 MacBook Air and it looks like this is going to be the final year that I'm going to be able to own my 2018 MacBook Air. Kind of sad. Uh, I really love this computer. It's still in pristine condition uh, so it's going to be kind of sad but I'm going to have to get rid of this computer I guess next year anyways. We got you know several years out of it like we normally do. Not as long as my 2011 MacBook Pro from 2011-2018. But I have a feeling this is because my 2018 Air has an Intel chip in it still and Apple is trying to phase out still supporting those Intel uh, based Macs. So it looks like next year I'm going to be getting me a new Mac. So let me know what I should get in the comments down below I guess. But you can also see that it looks like the oldest we have here is 2017 iMac Pros and then we have 18 MacBook Air. 18 and later MacBook Pros and then we go to 2019 well actually we have 2018 Mac Minis and later right there so there's a lot of 2018 uh, models that this is going to be the last year for you see we have 2019 iMacs 2019 Mac Pros and then we go to Mac Studio 2022 so uh, yeah if you have any of these devices then you'll be able to run macOS Sonoma. So as usual here with a new version of a major Apple software release, a lot of the features are shared across the platform. So we'll have some iOS features, some iPadOS features, and macOS features, you know, they'll all be shared across everything. So you might see some of me some of the stuff that I mentioned already be mentioned in my other videos about iOS. So be sure to check that out as well. But anyways, let's first talk about some wallpaper. So Apple has added a ton of wallpapers and screensavers here in Sonoma. So to access these, of course, we'll head over to our system settings. A bit different here. We now have the title of the wallpaper up here. We also have the ability to show it as a screensaver and show it on all of our different spaces or our virtual desktops. So you can see that there's a lot of different categories down here now. So we have your own photos. So if you had a photo library or previous photos that you use uh, for your wallpaper, you can find those right there. We also have dynamic wallpapers, which these all look basically the same that we've had over the past couple of versions of macOS. There might be a couple of new ones in here, but it doesn't really look like uh, there are, except of course the new Sonoma uh, dynamic wallpaper right here. But if we scroll down, we're going to see a lot of new categories. So we have landscape, cityscape, underwater, earth. We can shuffle different aerial photos. We have these different uh, colorful pictures here that you can choose from, which are kind of looks like some of the MacBook Pro wallpapers. We have solid colors and then we have uh, any other, this is a folder of mine that I have, so a bunch of different car wallpapers in there. But if you notice, if we look at something, for example, like the cityscape wallpapers, you'll see that there's a little kind of play button right here. 
And that basically means that these wallpapers are now animated. Now a lot of these actually come from the Apple TV. So if you have an Apple TV, chances are you've seen a bunch of these wallpapers. Like I know that I've seen definitely this LA overpass, this kelp forest, the Dubai skyline, you know, all these different ones. A lot of these earth ones here, uh, I've definitely seen those before. You also notice that a lot of these wallpapers are actually not stored on your system because, well, they are video files, and video files can be quite large, especially when Apple shoots these in some of the best quality. So a lot of these you actually have to download. So if you see some with this little picture like this or a little arrow right here, you have to actually download these. And as you can see, a lot of these have to be downloaded. So if you want to download one of them, all you got to do is just click on one. So let's try the Redwoods from above. And you can see that it'll go ahead and start downloading the wallpaper. Now, like I said, I'm sure these files are several gigabytes, so they can take a while. So you want to make sure that you're only downloading the wallpapers that you're actually going to use because they could eat up storage. Let's go ahead and just show you what one of these animated wallpapers will look like. So this Sonoma Horizon is one of the new ones here. It's actually the default one that was here on my screen uh, once I got it all installed. So you can see that right now it's actually not animated, but if we were to go to the lock screen, you will see that it'll start to animate itself. Now it'll take a little second here, and there you go. Now it's a little choppy, of course, because, well, we're screen recording, but I promise it's smooth when you're not uh, screen recording. <laughs> but yeah, you, so you have this little animation here. You also notice that your lock screen looks a little bit dare I say iPad OS like so we have literally the identical kind of clock and date up there kind of giving me some iPad OS vibes but then you have your password and your profile down there at the bottom as well and once you sign in to your profile the wallpaper will continue to be animated for a few seconds and then it will pause for you so uh, that's pretty cool. So you have a bunch of new wallpapers to choose from and of course those can also be set as your screen savers as well. Next thing we'll talk about here is widgets. So widgets are nothing new here in Mac OS. We've had these for absolutely forever. But of course you can go up here to your notification center and you can see your different widgets. Uh, and notifications appear over here on your right hand side. You can also click on the edit widgets button which will then bring up your widget pane and you can select different ones and things like that. But now the big deal of course is with widgets they can now be placed anywhere on your desktop and they can adapt to the color of your wallpaper, kind of be transparent and all that good stuff. For So I can either drag them out from over here. So let's go ahead and just take the stocks widget and we'll just drag it over here to our desktop and you can see that it's as simple as that. So you can place these anywhere you want. You can see that Apple kind of does give you some little guidance lines and kind of snaps them uh, into certain places. So let's see, we can drag our calendar out can see we can put it right there in the middle if we want or if we want to put it over here you can see that it's kind of showing me the different areas that it could kind of snap into right there so that's pretty cool you can now have widgets displayed on your desktop another cool thing with widgets if we go into edit widgets you can see that we can select from all these different widgets here but if you notice there are some of these that I actually do not have installed on this computer. So if we look at like the Weather Channel, we look at Southwest, Snapchat, these are all widgets that I can have from my iPhone. So that's the cool part now. So for example, let's say if you wanted to have Market Watch, for example, I definitely don't have Market Watch installed, but these are from my iPhone. So they actually sync up with my phone and I can have the widgets right here. So let's say we want to put a watch list up here. Well, this widget is running straight from my phone. It's pretty cool. 
uh, that you can include the iPhone widgets here uh, now as well. Also these widgets are now interactive so certain widgets you can interact with them uh, right here so if we had like the home app for example we could control different devices within the widget so widgets have gotten a pretty big upgrade here. Let's talk about something else that has gotten quite a big upgrade and that's Safari. So the first thing we can see here is that private browsing is now password protected so you can lock that up if you so desire. There's also a lot of features that have been brought over from iOS. So there's a lot of different things here to talk about. So there's now the ability to have profiles here in Safari. So kind of like we've been able to do in Google Chrome for all those years, you can have different profiles which will basically keep all your history, your tabs, your different uh, cookies and extensions and things like that all in separate profiles. So you can access that uh, in your Safari settings. So if we go into settings, you can see over here it says profiles and you can click on the start using profile button and you can set those up. So pretty cool there keep your browsing separate if you have multiple people using your device there's also enhanced private browsing so if we go under privacy we can go under enhanced settings or advanced settings I should say you can see that we now have the advanced tracking and fingerprinting protection we can choose where we want to use that from we're also hiding our IP address and we can change the touch ID setting or password protection right here as well you also have the ability to share your passwords with trusted contacts so you can use passkey uh, in order to do that and then the other thing here the main feature is you now have the ability to add websites or basically web apps so you can have a web app that lets you use a website like an application now we've been able to do this on our iPhone and our iPad for quite some time basically let's say we want apple.com to be on our home screen on our iPhone Well, we just hit tap the share button we would hit add to home screen and it would behave like an application would well now you can do that here on your Mac with Safari so let's say we want to add the Apple uh, Mac OS Sonoma page as an application well, we just go to file we hit add to dock and you'll get a little pop-up window right here you can name it whatever you want you can choose the website URL and then we can hit add and you can see down here in the bottom we have Mac OS Sonoma Apple so we can click on that and it'll open up a separate application web app for us and it'll take us immediately to this Mac OS Sonoma page so if there's some website that you use quite frequently well this is a good way to do that so you can see it functions as it should and of course you can add as many websites as you want down here in your dock you can also just simply remove them when you no longer want them there of course there's a few updates to do with messaging and video conferencing slash FaceTime so these updates of course we've seen on iOS 17 but now you have presenter overlay which keeps you front and center while sharing your screen in FaceTime you also have the ability for different reactions uh, based on you know if you give a thumbs up on the camera it'll actually give a thumbs up reaction for you so that's pretty cool and then messages has different live stickers and search filters for different people keyboards and then you can also do the new swipe to reply in line on any iMessage bubble which is pretty handy another cool thing here is a new game mode now the word gaming and Mac probably doesn't need to go together but here we are so there's a new game mode which automatically gives games top priority over your CPU and GPU of your Mac so you can basically enable this and have a much better gaming experience now of course uh, this is only available if you have an Apple Silicon Mac which I do not have and I also don't have any games so but if you do and you want to game on your Mac you can try out this new gaming mode of course the keyboard now has a new feature as well so this is what we've also saw here on iOS so you have improved autocorrect accuracy and you can also have different predictive text features and things like that there's of course a lot of the new airpod features uh, as well so there's different uh, 
improved different adaptive audio and noise cancellation transparency and all that good stuff there are some additional privacy settings uh, that we can take a look at so one of them here of course is sensitive content warnings so you can go in here and turn this on basically it'll use the neural engine to detect uh, things that might be inappropriate and you can turn this feature on and it'll actually blur uh, those items out so you can't see them. There's also additional features for uh, children so now it kind of uses the same sensitive content thing to be able to detect things so if you're a parent and you're managing your child's device you can uh, enable that so it prevents stuff from being shown to them as well. There are several new accessibility features here so one of them is the new live speech so this lets you type what you want to say and it'll read it out loud in a FaceTime call or in-person conversations. You can also uh, create your own voice. So you can go in here and create your own voice. So you can use that. You can also choose your language and font size and all that stuff as well. There's also the personal voice like I just mentioned. So it helps users at risk of speech loss create a voice that sounds like them in a private and secure way using on-device machine learning. And another thing, one more thing here is made for compatible uh, iPhone hearing devices can be paired with your Mac. So you can now uh, do that with the hearing controls as well. And then the other things to talk about are just some other changes that they've kind of made here and there. So now you can do autofill codes, uh, you know, two-factor authentication things. Uh, from an email instead of a text if you want to. Uh, there's grocery list and the reminders app. There's improvements to visual lookup. And then of course, instead of saying, hey, you know who, you can just say Siri. So uh, that is some of the other changes as well. There's also been some updates to the battery health management. If you're on a M2 MacBook Pro, or I mean the MacBook Air, not the MacBook Pro, so there's been kind of some recalibration of that as well. But yeah, guys, other than that stuff, I mean, that's everything new basically here in macOS 14 Sonoma. A lot of new features here, a lot of shared features, but the main things, of course, are all these cool new wallpapers, the ability to have widgets, all those Safari different things and more. Anyways, guys, let me know what your favorite feature is of Sonoma in the comments down below, and I will catch you all in the next video. Thanks for watching.